Hey everybody, this is Petey from Spin Rack, and we also have Calvin Ellis ready to rock. Today we are doing a trailer, and this trailer is the Moon Girl series, right? You seeing that? Yep. Right. Okay, cool. So um we did do a review of the comic book. I don't know if that's gonna lead us into getting in trouble with the fans. <laughs> but um the interesting part of the Devil Dinosaur comic book was the Devil Dinosaur. <laughs> and the, by the, the prehistoric people knew um, Devil Dinosaur as Devil. And we had Moon Boy, who was a, a sidekick, you know, who would sometimes be his friend, um, be captured, Devil would have to save him. It was just something that was kind of made for animation, and that's why um Marvel asked him to do it. They knew how close Commandy was to Devil to to becoming an animated series. So they were saying, can you give us something like that? We got Devil Dinosaur. Now Kirby, because it wasn't successful and people said, what? This and humans running around with um dinosaurs? They got cynical, even though it was something that Marvel knew that they asked Kirby to do. To give them something kind of, that would be kind of like um, that, and you know, you already know the connection between Commandy and the Planet of the Apes. So it's kind of going in that sort of realm of type of thing of this uh, world, but it's not being the same thing. Burnt, I'm sorry, Kirby is doing something, you know, trying to do something different. So it's not just him redoing um, Commandy; it's him doing. A prehistoric dinosaur in this world which was a hundred of different pitfalls so it didn't have to play in any sort of real realm and it you know plays off a lot of the hollywood dinosaurs which had humans at the same time but <clears throat> any first thoughts that you have since we reviewed it? i want to say, i wanted to bring that up since we both reviewed the comic book and we savaged oh. it <laughs> no let's let it roll Ready? They have the show. Okay. Still working on that thing that's gonna fix all our problems. Time to get genius! It's working! Yes! Oh no, no! Oh. What do you say? Oh man! Oh, crazy. don't start like that. You just saw that. Look how great the animation is. <laughs> oh man! Oh man! Man! Mm. You want to go first? No, I'm gonna let you go first, sir. <laughs> That's a, you got. You maybe have some more positive to say. <laughs> um. 
Go, go, go all, you know, come on. We got to, let's start. You want me to do the spirit of Mars, the spirit of Mars saying, this is a, look at the, the animation is nice. The, the uplifting character. Um, I think, uh, I think Raphael Sadiq does the music in this. I think Lars Fishburne plays the Beyonder in this. It's a, he look well, all right. All right. I have to say it. Okay, you don't, you should hide your influences as much as you can. And when I talk about the story, I'm talking about taking Dexter's laboratory and Thank making you. Dee Dee into a black girl. Thank like you. they took Dee Dee, Dee Dee, no. <laughs> this is the, and the style, the whole layout. She got the pink tails on, we got the Afro puffs. Like, it's 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 a smart taking Dexter putting the glasses and then getting rid of the whole Dexter personality of the you know the Austrian kids and the and that's sort of the Austrian scientists in the aspect and just make Dee Dee smart and a black girl and it's like it's so that I have to take some points off because it's like you didn't have to do that and then at the same time when she decides to get an outfit. She decides to do the Kitty Pride in the, what was it, the X-Men, um, what the hell was that, X-Men 150 or 149, where she decides to make her own costume, and it's, a, maybe it's 148, where it's like a, it's like a, it's a, it's a person, a kid with no style, like kind of puts together a costume, and they kind of went for the, you know, like what adults think kids would dress like, whereas um, the only reason why kids wear the body superhero costume that we used to get as a kid, because our past all we had, you know, but, um, you know, yeah. in, in Marvel, like Spider-Man has makes the most, <laughs> the, the, the supposed, excuse me, the, the supposed nerdy kid makes the most uh, dynamic costume you could ever make. Why can't the girls make a cool costume? A uh, 15, 16 year old Peter Parker can make a better costume than a 13 year old genius Kitty Pride, and then another genius. They ain't got no sense of style, but Peter Parker did. Come on, guys, let's not keep doing what we think the 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 um the five year old would do, where they just put let me pick out all the dad's clothes and put it on, like and then <laughs> like that's what they do. So those are. Those are my big things. I don't really, I mean, Dexter's Laboratory is so, such a, you know, it's such a bug out cartoon to kind of take Dee Dee, which was such a fun character and um, make her into a genius is just like, not the way to go. And I would have tried to do as much as I could to not make her Dee Dee, you know, because Dee Dee is really something that I was just like looking at, I was like, is this, this Dee Dee, ain't it this Dee Dee? But that's, Otherwise, you know, they have the millennial stuff and the, the, the social media, and they have somewhat of the Into the Spider-Verse animation, which is always fun. But, um, and then the little side side remarks about no one coming down to the east side type of deal. It's like, maybe, <laughs> maybe the heroes don't come down to Coney Island, or maybe they don't go down to Bensonhurst, or maybe they don't get to the Bronx. Like, are you really think they don't get down to the low east side? I don't know. But, you know, we didn't have to have that, those lines. But, you know, how else would we know that they're a black family? They're not the police. They're superheroes. <sighs> okay. Here we go. Here you go. Um, it's on you now. I did as much as, as, much as I could, and I, I let it out. I, let, I didn't let the, the voice of Mars... I didn't allow, I should have listened to it and just been positive. They're not superheroes. So they, they decided to give that up some time ago. They're not superheroes. They don't really want to do, the, you know, the costumes are stupid. The the idea that uh, we can find her, that these people get thrust in these situations and they're regular people, but they find this heroism, to, you know, to deal with whatever the initial situation is and to continue using these abilities and talents that they have in the you know in the efforts you know of continued her you know of heroism is not something that they're addressing any longer so i can put that to the side but i'm looking at the show i'm like all right i'm 12 13 it's a new cartoon why do i want to watch this what's the hook 
And, you know, I, I'm looking at the whole thing. like, And again, it's not a superhero show. So if it was a superhero show, oh, I would still get into it because, all right, you know, I can expect those type of things. This looks like a comedy. It looks like a situation comedy. And, you know, the, the hook of, you know, Devil Dinosaur was Devil Dinosaur. Yeah. The hook here is Moon Girl. And I'm not sure if I want to sit through uh, whatever antics she's going to have of trying to keep this dinosaur hidden from her mother, which, you know, again, is played. The the whole idea of, uh, you know, Dex's laboratory is there. You got some elements of Scooby-Doo and Johnny Test there. And isn't this a unique character on her own? What about this character should I be wanting to visit and come and take a look at with this particular show? It's just not there. It's just not there. There's I don't see anything unique about this character, this situation. I've seen this already. And, it, you know, it started with Scooby-Doo. You know, with the you know with the guy, you know, and the special animal, the special creature, whatever it may be, and that's supposed to be the, you know the hook into the show. Except here, I mean, Shaggy's never the hook into watching Scooby Doo. It's always Scooby. Here, the hook is supposed to be Moon Girl, and you're not really showing me anything dynamic about her that I would want to watch this. You know, I guess you know they they will say you know the argument always it can be made. Oh, you know, it's, uh, it's a girl show, so you know it's going to bring in young girls. Yeah, you know, young black girls can look at the show and. They'll see some representation. Well, that's fine. Doesn't do anything for me. I would just like to watch a show. And I still watch a lot of animation. I would love to just be able to get into a show. And it's cool. It's fun. It's a little romp at the end of the day. I had a whole bunch of fun watching, uh, you know, with my nieces and such as they were growing up, watching whatever, you know, comic uh, cartoons that they were into. You know, I, I learned that Ed, Ed and Ernie wasn't as bad as I thought it was. But then, I, you know, I look at this overall. I'm like, why would a kid be interested? Why would a kid that this doesn't directly speak to for the obvious reasons, want to give this a shot. And the reason is Devil Dinosaur. And I'm not seeing that in this, I'm not seeing that initially in the trailer that is being offered. You know, show might be 100% different, but that's your hook. You know, Moon Girl is your hook, is problematic, is, is problematic on more than one level. But I don't get to make, I don't get to make the shows. And they've, you know, they decided this is the direction that they want to go with. So, hey, let's see them go with it. Yeah, and this is, you know, they had the the bits. So, you know, I, I don't know. This What's in the trail is what they're selling. So I would just, I'm just taking points off of just the dynamic of the character because it's just so similar to Dee Dee. And it's just like, and that's one of the things that was interesting as you went to, whereas you could see, um, in Dexter's laboratory, outside of that initial thing, um, with the Justice Friends, where they had their influences, where they had a mix of Justice League and the Avengers in there. And then when you get to the, the Powerpuff Girls, you know, you had the superhero thing. And but at the same time, you had the family dynamic, the kids school, and it all kind of rang true and kind of was a lot of fun and that sort of thing. And even when they went, we were like, oh, this, they can't, there's no way they can do this. Because when I saw a little bit of the, the Beyonder, that looks like something straight out of the, there's a, a Powerpuff Girls where they go to, was it, um, was it Boogie Nights or something like that? And they go to this underground of, of where the boogeyman is. And it's like a disco type thing. And like me and a friend of mine, we would just like, and we like, you know, we in our twenties, and we were just like, we lost it for. We were doing lines from "Blame It on the Boogie" like for for like <laughs> months. Like it was just like the most amazing thing I've seen in a while. There's so many episodes and so many bits where they were like, they introduced the Cowpuff Girls to the other girls in school, and they're like, he said, um, everyone's telling their day that what happened to them. It's like, and Bubbles is like. Um, I, I came here cause I was a, I was an accident. And then next thing another kid, regular kid says, oh, my mommy and daddy says I was an accident too. And I, <laughs> I was like, so you got, I mean, I, I went, it's funny when I saw my, my little cousins, well, they, my, they're my big cousins. Now they're all grown, but they would watch the cartoons and I was just like, how the hell? Did the animation get solid 
And at the same time, how is the storytelling, same way like The Simpsons, just rock solid? So I think, and I'm hoping that everything with, you know, well, Marvel has been different with their television. So they've been kind of, in my eyes, kind of not stepping up to be the best sort of writing that you can do. They've been doing good for a superhero type of thing. So people look at it and see Loki and they're just like, oh, hey, this is good for a superhero thing. Oh, I like, um, you know, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't get the Sylvie thing, but they somehow get this. So there's a lot of, um, uh, they're getting a lot of allowances to Marvel and these sort of things, but the animation's up to snuff. And I just think if you're gonna, you're gonna borrow from that, you really need to step it up because it's got a lot of kitty pride in it, got a lot of Dee Dee in the look. And, um, you know, and then as you said, the Scooby-Doo aspect with the silly part of having this, um, you know, a snuffleupagus type of thing or... or Professor, uh, hmm? Professor Peabody and Sherman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. You got, um, the, you know, you know, the gorilla that's, emoji. That's not to take a dig at the format where you have the kid yeah. And, you, have the, you know, the talking animal or, you know, it's been done. There's no license saying that it can only be done by Scooby-Doo and anybody else needs to be sued. Yeah. You can do you, know, you can do that. But this is really reverting that formula where the draw, I mean, Professor Peabody and Sherman, nobody's tuning in to see Sherman. Mm -hmm. okay? Professor Peabody, see what, you know, concoction he gets into. Same thing with Scooby-Doo and the other ones. This one you're making, okay, you want to put Moon Girl. You know, out you know, out front, and even when they were doing Devil Dinosaur and Moon Boy, what was Devil Dinosaur and Moon Boy? Devil Dinosaur is the guy out front. Moon Boy, you know, is how the Moon Boy is for the readers to connect more so than anything else. You know, not taking anything away from Moon Boy. So here you've got Moon Girl out front, and you know, I, I just like okay, I, I I really want to see how they execute this. You know some stuff I really can't get into on the show because we'll just get in trouble. But I really want to see how they execute this. And I'm not sure why they would take this particular tech. I already had my issues with Moon Girl when they decided that she was smarter than Reed Richards. And I was like, get the hell out of here. So <laughs> I guess they're continuing on with their smart decisions in doing this. But, it's you know, it's for kids. And the, the more interesting character is not going to be Moon Girl. It's going to be the dinosaur. You know, you know, you call them devil dinosaur. That's where your hook is at the end of the day. I don't see why they're putting I don't see why they're putting her up front and I don't see why if they're going to put her up front that there's no I don't feel any draw to actually watch this character in, in any of these adventures that may ensue. Yeah, well, I mean, it's just, you know, ultimately it's gorgeous. And but it's like I think when you look at um with, with the Cartoon Network is doing, they had that one that nutty one with, with the Grim Reaper as one of the part of the team, part of the group is just like, I watch it and I crack up and it's just like, who the hell thought of this? And why does it work so well? So I, I always wish they would kind of bring some more to it. And I also was a fan of the, I mean, I was a kid reading, I was like, what, seven? When the Devil Dinosaur comic had, and we had like issue two. And the first one you see him leaping and the next thing you know, they're leaping over a bunch of, um, tr you know, spiked like, um, um, trees like for the devil to jump into and they're just like <laughs> they want him to die and basically on the devil because he's like red but um you know it's one of those things where it's like a, something that was close to me and kind of like they kind of moved it away and so if you're going to do this I mean hopefully you drag in moon boy or you drag uh, moon girl into the past and you somehow factor in that stuff and give a nod to the stuff because um, I don't know that, I mean, it's extracting, I don't know, it's kind of in the sense of fixing something that's a bad, which would people, people seem, think would be a bad property in a Kirby thing, the same attitude people had towards the um, Eternals, when it was something that was pitched to Kirby to kind of give us something that could work on this, like a Saturday morning cartoon, you know, and this is obviously this show is something that will work as a Saturday morning cartoon, the plucky girl that's a genius and this, that, and the other. But the only thing is that Marvel now has a bunch of black girl geniuses now. You got um, Shuri, 
you got Ironheart and you got, um, you know, you got um, Moon Girl. So um, you could do Ironheart when they do an Ironheart series, right? Is that an animation too? Hopefully not. Hopefully that's a, they, they have the girl, they have the girl for it. So luckily, and Shuri was already in the cartoon. So ultimately it looks good. You know, my reservations are more from the look and stuff that they're borrowing from. And um, Cal has said his piece. Anything else you want to say? We suppose that Mars is going to be so upset with us. <laughs> no, I'm going to, as of the trailer, everything that I'm saying is based on the trailer. I'll, I'll give it a fair go. So, you know, cool. and I'm yeah. going to I'll see how I feel about it afterwards because. And I, and I hope everybody understands this. You can have some serious reservations about something based on what you see initially, and then you get into it and you're pleasantly surprised. So I always keep that option that, you know, there's some room for surprise. Not going to it, look, I'm just going to trash it because I didn't like because I didn't like the trailer or because I didn't like certain things that were said in the actual series. And I, I think some of the decisions they make when it comes to these things are questionable, especially knowing, you know, what kids like to, what, you know, draws kids into these things and i'm gonna presume it's meant for kids you know mm -hmm. guys my age so you know i always find that to be interesting in terms of those particular decisions but still gonna you know i'm still gonna watch it and if it's good it's good if it's not well hey yeah on the, this is not in relation to this so i guess in relation to disney like one of the things that i find myself doing after i watch a disney marvel show is not less so with like Andor or the Mandalorian, maybe a little with um, Luke's, what's the name, with, um, what's the name? Uh, sometimes with the Marvel ones, I wind up trying to find something else on uh, the Disney channel. And that leads me to M Miraculous, <laughs> which is like the only basic superhero co cartoon Oh, characters where they have secret identities and they have to try to protect them and protect them from each other, even though they're a team. It's just like we got that, and I find myself going to see what else is on here to fill the fill a gap that I had after watching the Marvel series. So hopefully, this Devil's Dinosaur is not that, but I've heard some good things, and um, I'm still a big fan of Devil. Uh, I think if we can get some Kirby out of it, but you know that's they, they fixed all of it. <laughs> That good luck with that. They don't even want to. Is it, they don't want to keep the burn stuff, let alone the Kirby stuff. Good luck with that. <laughs> you know, they sit. Down, they sit down in the meetings. We don't want to offend anybody under any circumstances. So that's where we're going. Even the bad guys got to be likable. We got to like them. <laughs> we got to like. Them. Yeah, when you decide the Modoc has to end on a good note. <laughs> well, All right. Yeah. That's what that's what happens when you move away from the superhero stuff. Superheroes are not. I, I don't believe in the, that whole term of gray area. It's just, it's just right and wrong. And superheroes are like, look, this is good versus evil. Modok is a bad, evil character. He's supposed to be defeated, and we're not supposed to wonder about him later on because he was bad. Instead, they're like, well, let's go with the sympathetic villain, and we don't want the heroes to have secret identities because secrets are wrong, except for the secrets that we can use to make drama from. Those secrets are good. And then here you are. You got high, you got high octane soap operas, you know, with people with superpowers, but there's no heroism to it at the end of the day. And, you know, Moon Girl, Devil Dinosaur seems to be the latest offering of that. I, I you know, I guess one thing that pulls me up is like, when you know he's he's taking all the food out of the refrigerator and a mom's like oh you can't take all that food without my pie and i'm like okay so <laughs> that's what we're gonna be with this that's what we're gonna be with this particular show she's hiding a dinosaur in her basement someplace <laughs> she can't have an identity but she can hide a dinosaur okay well i mean that's the uh, you know there's aspects of it that they you know the ones that work for them and they, you know, blissfully are don't understand why that would mean something in the regular sort of thing. To be like, why can Spider Man has a full mask? Nope, we got to by the by the end of the second movie, everyone has to know his, his secret identity, and then the cosmic sort of thing happens, so nobody remembers him. But 
who knows what happens when we get to the next one because we don't want to lose those. I mean, it'd be the first time we did a movie where it's only him. And, you know, but anyway. Yeah, they, I mean, they've they totally given up on the secret identity mm-hmm. and and uh, wanted to do anything like that. When Marvel was, Marvel did some fun things with him. Not all of it was perfect, obviously, like the Mike Murdoch, but as a kid, I was like, <laughs> it was just like, a whole bunch of fun where it's just like the other characters looked at Mike and was like, oh God, Mike, he's just so overbearing. <laughs> and then it's like, but at the same time, Matt Murdock is mm-hmm. like thinking he's secondary to himself. <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't know. All right. So um, check out Moon Girl. Let us know what you think. And, um, you know, um, yeah, so I think I said in my other thing, they didn't have any, I was thinking of live action, but you got your Empower, you got your Moon Girl from Marvel, if you want some comic book stuff to check out, and uh, I'm not sure what, I guess they, we just look, we just did the thing, so I'm not sure what's next on the line as far as series, but check it out and see what you think. And if you said, notice, I'm glad, thank you that you noticed that it was there was some DD in um What's the name in the in Moon Girl? Because that was like, what is this? That's Dee Dee. Damn yep. it. <laughs> anyway, okay, that's it. Spinnerack. Out. Out.